You reign forever. 
worship you, Lord. Come on, sing a new song. Sing a new song. Speak in tongues this morning. Stir up the atmosphere in this place. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is here. Because we are gathered in his name. Stir up the Spirit of God in you right now.
situation and every circumstance that tries to rise itself above the name of God in your life. And I want you to sing it to it directly. Whatever it is, by whatever name it may be called, I want you to sing the name of Adonai. From the We worship you, Father. We worship you this morning. We worship you this morning. We worship you. of the same we will worship you we will proclaim your name you are worthy of all glory or honor and all praise in the name of Jesus I pray right now Holy Spirit angels of the living God that you fill every living room Father God go through every device every television Father God in the name of Jesus those that are watching in their cars I pray that you fill their cars right now those that are listening at home Father God Fill their home, penetrate the atmosphere, Father God. We ask that you be glorified and that you be magnified and that you be lifted high this evening. We give you all glory, we give you all honor, we give you all praise that is due to your name. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Welcome, 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 welcome to Wednesday service. It's an honor to have you online with us today. Um, I'm just going to go through a few announcements before we go into the word. I hope that you're ready. I hope you're excited to hear the word of God today. So we've just got a few announcements. Just a reminder for those of you that have managed to book in and have managed to get on with the link that went very quickly this Sunday. Um, there is a nine o'clock service and that is going to be slightly extended to 11 o'clock. So we're no longer going to be finishing at 1030 we're going to now be finishing at 11 o'clock and the what was the 11 o'clock service will now be starting at 11 30 a.m which means that also youth will be pushed to start at two o'clock so nine o'clock 11 30 and two o'clock so make sure you come this is not now a reason no one should be late especially for the 11 30 service nobody should be late if you haven't yet registered and you haven't been able to get on please email us at vcvchurch at aol.co.uk we always do our best to accommodate you where possible um, also the month of october is thanksgiving month um, for those of you that maybe are new to the church and haven't been part of our thanksgiving month it's an incredible time where throughout the month of october we focus on giving and giving back, giving back to our community, giving to others, um, being thankful to God, showing gratitude. So we're going to be having the random acts of kindness envelopes, which everyone's going to be able to receive, which will allow you to go out 
throughout that month and find people to bless. And then at the, the last Sunday of that month, so the last Sunday in October, we're going to be giving our Thanksgiving um, in both services. So we're going to be able to give our Thanksgiving offering, but also we're going to be able to choose and nominate someone that we want to bless. In the past, People have blessed people paying their mortgage for the year. People have blessed people with cars. People have blessed them with spa treatments or day vacations or just monetary gifts. Whatever it is that you feel in your heart. If there's someone in the church that you um, really feel God um, impressing in your heart to bless, then this is the time to do it. So just email us at btvchurch at aol.co.uk. Let us know the person that it is that you're wanting to bless and which service that you're going to be in. And if possible try and get them in the same service as you that last Sunday in October um, and then we've also got our offering for Uganda we're going to be doing an offering for Uganda um, this Sunday so prepare in advance um, incredible seed that we've already got in the in the ground but how many of you know we can never have too much seed but thank you so much for everyone that has given so far um, may God cause a hundredfold return to come back to your life but we're going to be sowing again and helping them to do the work of the ministry um, over in Uganda so please come prepared for that I think that that's about it for now um, other than our regular um, meetings which is Mondays uh, we've got prayer meeting at 9 p.m. Tuesdays we've got Bible study you're here with us online now for midweek service and then Friday we've got our midnight prayer and then we're back to Sunday so um, I hope that you're still tuning in logging in and being part of what we're doing so we're gonna um, go before the Lord in prayer this evening we're gonna um, prepare our hearts we're gonna position ourselves we're gonna get right so wherever you are i know you might be driving i know that you might be in your living room but let's get our heart right let's get our stance right let's draw down on the presence of god today because how many of you know he can come wherever you are right now so switch off the radio or whatever distractions are around you ask the kids to go somewhere else or hopefully they're in bed right now and let's get ready to receive from the um, spirit of god this evening father god we just welcome you right now Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence. We ask you to come, Father God, in all your glory, Father God. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, Father God, tonight. Father God, speak to our spirits, Father God. We say that we're listening. Father God, we make ourselves vessels, Father God, for you to use. And we ask, Father God, that you be glorified, you be magnified, and you be lifted high. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen amen for those of you that are taking notes the title of my message today is who sows into your field i'll say that one more time who sows into your field if there's someone sitting next to you in your living room or in your car ask them or just ask yourself out loud who sows into your field turn with me if you can to matthew chapter 13 and we're going to read from verses 24 to 26 matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 26 matthew 13 verses 24 to 26 and it says this another parable he put forth to them saying the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. We see here where Jesus gives an analogy of a field and the process of sowing. I want us to ask ourselves the question today, what is the field that we sow into today? And what are some of the tares that maybe can appear in that field? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, and we're going to answer that question today. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, hopefully you're there with me. And it says, um, keep and keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. I'll read that one more time. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issue of life. Another version says to guard your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. We're going to revisit that scripture in a minute. I'm just laying some foundation scriptures at the moment. Turn back to the New Testament to Luke chapter 6 verse 45. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. 
I hope you're doing okay. You've had a good week so far. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. And it reads, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. I'll read that one more time. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of his, the abundance of his heart, his mouth speaks. So I'll ask the question today, what is our field today? How do we sow? The field, the field that I'm going to be referring to in this sermon today is the field of our heart. The question that I ask ourselves at the beginning is who sows into your field? In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, he says that we're to guard our heart, keep our heart, because he says for out of it springs the issue of life. Now how many of you know that you don't have to guard anything that is of no value? You know, anything that is not worth anything, you know, when you're in the shopping centre you might walk past and they have displays outside of the shop, even on rails. Those are the things that are not worth anything. But the things that actually um, have value placed on it, you'll see that they're behind glass or they're locked away even in a back room because when something is of value, we're to guard it. Why? Because we don't want anyone to steal what is of value. Well, it's the same with our heart today. God's saying that this is where the issues of your life come from. And then in Luke chapter 6, verse 45, it says that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart. So that means that I can have good treasure in my heart. But then he also talks about evil. So evil can also dwell in my heart. What's the difference? What's the difference between the person that has good in their heart? And what's the person, what's the difference between the person that has evil in their heart? Well, the difference is the seeds that have been sown into your heart, into your field. So the question again, who is sowing into your field today? What is being sown into your field today? Because if this is so important, my heart is so important. What is my heart? That's my spirit. That's my soul. That's where my soul is from, where everything starts from. If that is so important that, that, that God says that I'm to guard it, I should know the condition of my heart. I should know what's happening in my heart. I should know what seeds are being sown, what deposits are being put on the soil of my heart. So the field is our heart today. So what is the question that we need to ask ourselves? Who or what is sowing into our field? Are seeds of goodness and godliness being sown into the fields of our heart? Is gossip and backbiting being sown into the, see, the, the field of our heart? What about character assassination? How many of you have ever had somebody say something to you about somebody else? And then for the longest time, you then form an opinion of that individual. I'll, I'll go back even further. How many of you, when you were reading a book, I used to love reading books when I was younger, when I was little. I was, I was such a bookworm. And, you know, back then, you know, the, the books don't have any pictures. I remember even reading The Little Princess. And in my head, I formed this image of what Sarah, the princess, looked like. I formed this image in my head of what her dress and everything else looked like because the words in the book described to me who I thought she was. I never saw a picture of her or an image of her. And for the first time the other day, I watched a movie with my kids and did it match up? It didn't match up exactly what I had in my head. Well, sometimes the words that people use See, I formed my opinion on what a character in a book looked like based on the words that I'd read. Sometimes the words that people use form and lay a foundation in the field of our heart of who somebody is. And if we're not discerning enough and if we're not using enough wisdom, we can begin to form a negative opinion about somebody based on what someone else has told us, not what, someone, not what they have done themselves. I'll give you an example. I remember working with an individual um, once and we worked together for ages and at the end of the project that we'd been working on, she said to me, you're not stuck up at all. 
And I said, well, no, I, I hope not. And she said, oh, no, like, I'd heard so many things about you. And people had said that Sarah's stuck up. She's aloof. She's offish. And based on what other people had told her about me, she had formed an opinion. And it was only when she had been with me and worked with me and she saw that that was quite the contrary of who I am. How many times have people formed um, uh, um, pictures in your mind of who somebody is? It might even be about your pastoral team. It might even be about me. It might be about Pastor Douglas or Pastor Erica. And based on a third party, you might have formed an opinion, not based on who that individual is, but based on what someone else has told you. It's so surprising where people get upset or offended on someone else's behalf based on what someone else has told them. Well, that's sowing seeds of discord. That's sowing seeds of strife. That's sowing seeds of backbiting and gossip in the field of your heart. The Bible says that we're to guard it. What does that look like? Well, when someone comes to deliver an evil report about somebody else, well, let's line it up with the word of God because this is our measure, not based on whether I want to be that person's friend or not, whether I want them to think that I'm wonderful or great or not. No, my measuring stick is the word of God. So the word of God says that what so um if it if it's if for edification, is it going to impart grace to the hearer? If there's anything praiseworthy, if there's anything good, those are the things that we're meant to meditate on. So when someone comes and starts to spew out of their mouth because that's what it's like many of the times what comes out of their mouth is just venomous whenever they speak about that individual they're spitting out hate and malice and and gossip and and unforgiveness and bitterness when we open our hearts to that we're given the seed, uh, the soil, the field of our heart. We're giving that over to that individual and we're allowing them to place seeds of bitterness and unforgiveness and 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 bitter and 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 and, 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 and gossip and all of these different things. They're being sown into the fields of our heart. And you know what with seeds? It doesn't always show straight away. So you may walk away from that conversation and think, oh, I'm fine. But then as you go down the line, eventually that seed begins to manifest and it, it might just pop up for a second. But you know what? That left unchecked or that keep on, you keep on watering that, eventually that becomes a plant and that plant becomes a tree. And before you know it, you've got a root of bitterness or unforgiveness on the inside of you, not based on what anyone else has done to you, but based on third party offense of what somebody else had against somebody else. We've got to grow up spiritually, church. We've got to stop being like the wind tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. We need to get a plant system, a root system down on the inside of us where we're not going to be moved by everything that someone brings to us. We're not going to allow the field of our heart to be open for everybody. We need to protect it. That means if it doesn't line up with the word of God, if what you're saying, if what you're doing is not lining up with the word of God, I'm going to guard that. I'm going to protect that. I'm not going to allow anything into my heart that is not pleasing to God. Amen. Insecurity is a seed uh, that can be deposited into your heart. That can come through many different ways. It can come through a broken relationship. It can come through words that have been spoken over your life for many, many years. You may have grown up where your mother or your family were constantly telling you that you weren't enough. That you you didn't you you didn't match up, that you weren't the right colour, that you weren't the right height, that you weren't the right complexion. Those are seeds that are being put in your heart. We need to learn to go back sometimes and plough the, the field of our heart and say, God, uproot any ungodly seed that does not line up with the mirror of your word, God. If I was told over and over and again that I'm, I'm not enough, that I'm unattractive, that I'll never amount to anything, God, that doesn't line up with your word because your word says that before I was even formed in my mother's womb, you knew me and therefore, God, that doesn't line up with you who you say I am. 
And so, God, I ask you to uproot every negative seed, every negative label right now, because hurt people hurt people. And God, I don't want to replica what my mother did to me or my great grandmother did to me. God, it changes with me, Lord God. But first, I need to uproot that seed that has been placed in my heart. I remember when I was growing up, there was someone that used to always make fun of me. They used to call me um, skinny and bony and they used to make fun of me and make names and songs about me. And what that looked like is it became, it was sown as a seed. But because I left that unchecked, when that person had long gone, that seed began to grow on the inside of me and that manifested in many different ways. I'd put on loads of makeup because I felt like I needed to have all this makeup on to be semi-presentable to people. In fact, if I lost my makeup bag, I would be in tears at the thought of having to step out my house or in public without makeup on. Um, I, I would not wear a dress or a skirt because I thought everyone would laugh at my legs. It was in my head. But what, where was it the root? It was in my heart. Someone had sown a seed of insecurity and inadequacy into my heart. And because I didn't address that at the time, that seed came up and it began to manifest in my everyday life. Do you know what I had to do to uproot that seed? I had to take the word of God and I had to look in the mirror and I had to begin to speak the word of God over my life every day. I had to begin to look in the mirror and say, Sarah Jane, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Great is the hands that made you. And I had to begin to pronounce the word of God over my life until that seed was uprooted from my heart and, and, and replaced with the word of God. Amen. Seeds of negativity, they come as thoughts um, or negative labels that may have been placed on us, but if we don't resist it, it implants, in, implants into our hearts and starts to affect our actions, our behavior, our speech, our choices, and even our destiny. Negative seeds that are left unchecked in your heart can derail your destiny. There are so many people that are not in church today, not because they're not meant to be, but because seeds were sown in their heart that were left unchecked and they grew up and they took them out of, on, off course from where God had ordained them to be. God forbid that that be you. Check your heart daily. Go before God daily and say, God, if there be any root of bitterness or unforgiveness or hate or malice or anything that doesn't look like you, God, uproot it today in the name of Jesus. Some seeds don't show up straight away. It takes time to show up. How are these seeds sown into the field of our heart? They are sown through our eyes and they're sown through our ears. Our eyes and our ears are the gateways to our soul. I'll give you an example. The Bible says I'll set no evil thing before you. I was watching a series that my husband had been watching and I don't really watch TV very much. And so when I do, it's, it's you know, it's quite a, um, it's quite a thing, you know, like that, I've, the fact that I actually have time to actually sit down and watch this series. And I was watching this series and then just randomly in the middle of this series, it was going really well. There was something that took place in the series. I won't say what it was, but it was it was really disturbing what happened in the series. It was basically um, an act of violation or violence um, that I didn't see coming. And by the time I realized what was happening and by the time I switched it off, I had already seen too much. And I, I switched it off and I repented. I said to my husband yesterday, actually, I said, I've been saying for the last two weeks, God, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry that I allowed you to watch that with me. I'm so sorry that I, I subjected you to that. I'm so sorry that I subjected my spirit to that. And even though, I mean, I turned this off almost immediately once I realized what was happening and what I was watching, I switched it off immediately. But do you know what? That seed was sown in my spirit. 
I actually saw it with my eyes and I have been working for the last two weeks. God, see my mind, Lord God. Take that image away from my mind. God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for putting anything evil before my eyes, Lord Jesus. I have been constantly repenting. Why? Because I want this, this thing that I saw to come out of my spirit because I recognize if I leave that, then that becomes a seed, that seed becomes a plant, that plant becomes a tree. And the Bible says that I'll set no evil thing before my eyes. Some of us need to be conscious. We, we've seared our conscience. So anything can come in, anything that we hear, anything that we see, it's, 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 a, it's a free for all. And when we do that, we, we, we quench the spirit of God from operating. As soon as that thing came before my eyes, because the spirit of God was there with me, I knew immediately, turn it off, Sarah Jane. But because I had seen it, I had to now go back and repent and ask God to uproot what I had seen. Some of us need to go back and repent for what we've allowed into our ears. And allowed through our eyes. God, I repent, Lord God, for subjecting you to hearing that gossip. I repent, Lord God, for being part. I may not have said anything with my mouth, Lord God, but I listened. I didn't defend, Lord God. I didn't defend your name. I didn't defend the man of God. Lord God, I didn't defend your kingdom or your church. I listened and I partook, Lord God. I repent, Lord God, for subjecting your spirit to that spirit of gossip, that spirit of strife, that spirit spirit of malice, that spirit of discord, Lord God. God, I repent for what I've placed before my eyes, Lord God. That screenshot, that image, that Instagram feed, that um, TV show, whatever it might be, that blasphemy that comes through your TV. Repent today. The way that we uproot the negative seed in our heart is we have to repent. We have to uproot it in the name of Jesus. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. Verse 1, are you still with me? Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to read verse 1. Matthew 13, and we're going to read from verse 1. And it says, On the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat. Um, the whole multitude stood on the shore, and then he spoke many things to them in the parable, saying, Behold, a soul went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But the others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. We see here that we have different conditions of the heart. And we have to recognize that our heart is in different places today. Some of us, our heart has become hard. It's become stony. It's become like concrete. No matter what you hear from the word of God, nothing changes you. The, the company you keep will affect the condition of your heart. The enemy doesn't want the word of God to go in and settle because he knows that when it does, you become a weapon. The scariest opponent is one that um, knows who they are. The devil knows that the minute that the word of God goes in, takes root and actually bears fruit in your life, you will become a weapon that he cannot defeat. And that is why he works so hard. So if you're listening today and you can say, do you know what? I've become immune to the gospel. There was a season in my life where when I heard the word of God, I would immediately go and do it and, and want change. But I've come to the point where I've become familiar with the things of God. I hear the word of God and it goes in one ear and out the other. When I'm in church, I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. The minute that I leave the word of God, it's like it leads me to. You need to go before God tonight and ask him to break up the, the ground of your heart. 
If you have a hard heart today, you need to go before God and ask him. Say, God, I, I, I want to get back to that place with you where I hunger and I thirst for righteousness. Lord God, I want to get back to that place where I'm not filled with bitterness and unforgiveness and judgment and self-righteousness, Lord God. I want to get to the place, God, where your heartbeat is my heart's cry. You have to first understand where you are in order to get to where you're going. If you don't understand that you're in the wrong place, you're never going to get to the right location. You need to understand and assess where you are today. God, if I've drifted, if I've gone astray, Lord God, if your word is not impacting my life anymore, if I can be in your presence and not feel the need to lift my hands, if the, the, the mention of your name still doesn't make me want to get down on my knees and cry out, holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty, then this is a wake-up call for you today. I read the um, passage at the beginning where it says that because they went to sleep, the tears were sown in their hearts, in their fields. Because you've gone to sleep, people have deposited things. You have allowed things to be deposited into your heart and it's hardened the condition of your heart. The soil of your heart has gone hard. Today is the day to wake up, to return back to your first love, to go back to God and say, God, I repent, Lord God. Plow the field of my heart today. Soften it, tenderize it to the things of God once again. In Jesus' Jesus name. We need to look at the condition of our heart. Is there anything in our heart that would grieve or, or displease the Holy Spirit in any way? Let's not wait till the rapture. Let's not wait till the judgment day to, to assess the condition of our heart. Let's start today. It starts today. What is the condition of your heart? Put it before God and let him do what he can do. The expression break up the fallow ground is seen in Hosea 10.2 and Jeremiah 4.3. It means that we do not, um, you do not sow your seed among thorns. Break up your evil habits. Clear your heart of weeds in order that you may be prepared for the seed of righteousness. Land was allowed to lie fallow that it might become more fruitful. But when in this condition, it can soon become overgrown with thorns and weeds. In fact, most people, when there's fallow ground, would drop their rubbish um, and, and their junk on there. And then what would happen is the grass would grow over it and it would look like it, um, it, 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 was, um, it, was, it was fine. But then underneath that, there was junk and rubbish and all of these things growing up amongst what was supposed to be fruitful. Some of us are like that today because we're not um, managing and, and maintaining and aware of the field of our heart. Any junk is being deposited on us. We go to anybody. We listen to anybody. Any podcast, we're like, yep, we're like sheep. We just go here, we go there, we go everywhere. Anybody that wants to be our friend, we're like, yes, I'm here. Anyone that invites us over here, yes, I'm over there. No, pull back. If you have loads and loads and loads of friends, you're doing something wrong. Because people should, that are not right with God, should feel uncomfortable to be around you. If you're living right with God, if somebody is a gossip, if somebody is a backbiter, if somebody is not right with God, it should make them uncomfortable to be in your presence. I do not have a lot of friends. I do not do life with a lot of people because there's not very many people. It says many are called, but few are chosen. There is not many. It says great is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. Everyone's not going the direction that you are. If, if you are surrounded by a crowd and you've got all these people around you, I will challenge you today. Look around and make sure that everybody that is in your camp is supposed to be there. Not everybody comes to my house. Not everybody has my phone number. In fact, most people don't. I can name probably on both sets of hands how many people have my number. My phone very rarely rings. And if it does, it's the people that I do life with. Am I stuck up? Am I obnoxious? Do I think highly of myself more than I ought to? No. But I value the gift that God has placed on the inside of me. I value the heart that God has placed on the inside of me. I value my walk with God too much to risk 
walking with the wrong company, walking with people that are not like-minded. How can two walk together unless they agree? Some of you, all your friends are unsaved. None of them love God. None of them love Jesus. Profanity spills from their mouth every chance that they get. How can you walk together unless you agree? It's not possible. I have associations. I have associates, but not very many friends. I'm very friendly and I will say hello to everybody. I have no bitterness or unforgiveness before God against anybody in my life. But I'm very selective with who I call friend. Because who I call friend has the ability to derail me or to propel me into my destiny. You need to be around people that are going to challenge you. When you're wiling out, when you're messing up, when you're saying something wrong, when you're off track, you need the people around you that's going to be like, Sarah, I love you, but you're wrong. Sarah, I love you, but you didn't need to say that at that moment. Sarah, I love you, but you should have kept your tongue in that moment. Sarah, I love you, but you have not been where you need to be with God. Sarah, I love you, but when was the last time you picked up your Bible? Sarah, I love you, but why are you at church, at home when you're supposed to be in church? Those are the kind of friends that you need. Those are the kind of friends that are going to sow good seed into your field. Those are the kind of friends that you need to walk this walk. This race is not for the swift. If you still want to be in this race in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, then you need to get around the right people. And you know what? You need to get to the point where, God, if I have to walk this road alone in order to stay on track with you, then so be it. But I'm not going to associate myself with the ungodly and the unrighteous and grieve your Holy Spirit. I'm not going to, I'm no longer going to allow deposits of, of, of uh, profanity and, and, and ungodliness to be placed on the field of my heart. I am set apart. I am consecrated. I am a child of the uh, living God. I am an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And therefore, it, I will no longer be a dumping ground. My heart will not be known as being fallow, but my heart will be ripe. It will, my field will be ripe. It will be receptive to the things of God. Can you say amen? So how do we break up the fallow ground? By examining our heart on a regular basis. By being quick to repent, by removing self-righteousness, examine the spotlight on your life. Seek God, get into his word. We need to constantly purify my heart, Lord God. Let it be pure as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, Lord God. Make it pure from within. We, that needs to be our heart's cry on a daily basis. We need to be continually checking the condition of our heart. If we're looking at somebody else, it's always going to be somebody else's fault. When is it your fault? When is it your time to change? When is it my time to change? It's time to stop pointing the finger outward and start pointing the finger inward. Lord God, um, break the fallow ground in my heart, Lord God. God, if there's anything in my heart that is not pleasing to you, Lord God, remove it, Lord God. It's when we start hungering and thirsting for righteousness, when we start hungering and thirsting for holiness, that the field of our heart will be in the place where it needs to be in Jesus' name. It also talks about the, the cares of this world coming in to choke the word of God from our heart. My parents have pear trees in the back garden and these pear trees are not able to produce fruit in the way that they're meant to because next door have failed to cut their trees. So what's happened is next door's trees have grown higher than the pear trees that are in my parents' garden. So the, the trees next door are now blocking the light that the pear trees need to grow. The pear trees within themselves have everything that they need to produce the fruit that they're supposed to uh, produce. But because they're not positioned right, and because the trees next door are blocking their light, they're now no longer able to function at their fullest capacity. Well, some of us are like those pear trees. Because we don't position ourselves right and because we don't have enough of the word of God coming into our lives and because we don't surround ourselves with people that are right, the company that we keep are sometimes the blockages that stop us from being all that God has called us to be. It's time to 
remove the obstacles that are stopping the light from coming in today. And you need to say, God, do you know what? I give you permission to remove every ungodly thing and every ungodly person from my life. Anything that would block that light from coming in that I need to grow in the fullness of who you call me to do. God, I give you permission to remove that today in the name of Jesus. Who is stopping your light? For, who is it in your life that is blocking your light and stopping you from being who you are in Christ Jesus? People that you allow into your world will have the ability to wrap themselves around you and choke the word around you. The people around you will be either pushing you towards God or pulling you away from him. The basic way to answer this is do you feel closer to God when you walk away from your friends? Or do you feel further away? What about you? Are people's lives better because you're in it? Or are you the one sowing negative seeds into people's lives? That's a question that only we can answer individually today. God forbid that anyone's life is not more blessed when they're around me than when they're not. When you get around people, is it you that's bringing the gossip? Is it you that's bringing the malice and the backbiting and the bitterness and the unforgiveness? Is it you that's sowing the character assassination? If that is you today, there is a for now no condemnation, but you need to repent. We need to become good stewards with what God has placed in our lives. Amen. So who is sowing in your soil today? What seeds are being sown into you during the night when you wake up, when you're in your car, the conversations that you're having, those are all moments where seeds are being sown. When I'm asleep, the Bible audio is playing through the night. When I'm in my car, I'm listening to a podcast. When I'm washing up at the sink, I've got worship music playing. That's all deposits that are being put into my heart on a daily basis. Proverbs 6.12, turn there quickly with me. We're going to close in a second. Proverbs 6.12. Proverbs 6.12. And it says, a worthless person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. He winks with his eyes. He shuffles his feet. He points his fingers. Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually. He sows discord. Therefore, his calamity shall come suddenly. Suddenly, he shall be broken without remedy. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and run into evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. This is what the word of God says. He says that if you do any of these things, you're a wicked man or a wicked woman. Do you want to be known as wicked? I don't. So what do we have to do? We have to go back and we have to repent. We have to repent. Say, God, I've been wicked. I've operated in wicked ways. And Lord God, I repent today and I ask you to forgive me, Lord Jesus. When we don't deal with what we have in the side of us, we then affect other people. It says that you sow discord in other people's hearts. You sow discord amongst the brethren. Some people are going through churches today and causing havoc, causing calamities, causing mass deaths spiritually because they have not dealt with what they have, the issues that they have in the fields of their heart. You need to uproot that, that, that seed of bitterness, that seed of discord, those seeds of lies that have been sown on the inside of you and get back to the place where we're in right relationship with God. Amen. Hebrews 12, 5, uh, 15 says, Look, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Bitterness, the, uh, the inability to let go. When someone has wronged you, give it to Jesus. You holding on to it, taking it to bed with you, waking up with it is not going to help you. It's going to make you sick. It's going to make you bitter. It's going to cost you your destiny and maybe your eternal salvation. Let it go. It's not worth it. 
Proverbs 8.13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. We need to learn to love what God loves and hate what he hates. Um, uh, Matthew 7 says, By their fruits they will know th we will know them. Who will know them? The world will know us by the fruits that this field of our heart are producing. What are those fruits? What should they look like? Galatians 5, 22 to 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Today, church, it's time to get back to the heart of God. It's time to let go of all the other things that have been distractions. And Lord God, let the, let the, let the fruit that people see when they look at me, when they look at the, the harvest that is the field of my heart, let it be the fruit of the Spirit that they see. It's when they see that that we'll see more and more people come back to Christ. It's time to let go of the distractions. It's time to put away the, the, the gossiping and the backbiting and the unforgiveness and all of the things that displease God. And it's time to get back to the heart of worship. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that you're here in the midst of us, Father God. And we make a decision today, Father God, that we're going to be conscious today of the seeds that are being sown in the field of our heart. Lord God, we make a decision today, Father God, that we will not let un any ungodly seed to be placed on the inside of us, Lord God. But Lord God, we guard our hearts, we guard our spirits right now, Father God. And Father God, if we've allowed any seed of unforgiveness, any seed of gossip, any, any seed of discord or strife or um, bitterness or unforgiveness to be laid on the, an insecurity and any negative seed to be laid in the field of our heart, we ask you right now, Holy Spirit, by your supernatural power to uproot that right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What, for those of you that are maybe watching online and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me and mean it with all your heart. Say, Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart, to be my personal Lord and Savior. I ask you to forgive me of every sin, wash me in your blood, cleanse me now. I dedicate my life to you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. It says that the moment that you prayed that prayer, all of heaven rejoices with you. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or maybe you rededicated your life back to God tonight, we want to know, we want to give you a Bible, we want to put a Bible and some reading materials in your hand. Please email us at vcvchurch at aol.co.uk. God bless you. God bless you. Before we close today, we have the honor and the privilege of being able to take up our tithe and our offering. Again, this is a condition of our heart. Some of us, regardless of what we hear, regardless of what we see, we'll never give anything in the offering, we'll never tithe, because we've already established in our heart that we're not going to do that. Well, when you do that, you're, you're closing the windows of heaven over your life. But more than anything, you're not in unity with what the Spirit of God is doing within this ministry. I encourage each and every single one of you to... to like Malachi 3.10, test God at his word. Prove him now in this. If he will not rebuke the devourer for your sake and open the windows of heaven for you, that there will not be room enough to receive it. My life is a living testament of this reality. Tithing is a way of life. It is my lifestyle. It's what I do. And I don't do it to get. I do it because I love him. Because I want to see his kingdom established. Because I, I want to be obedient to his word in every aspect. So if you want to give today, then 
make sure that you uh, jump online. You can give um, at B2B Church, at, um, uh, sorry, www.b2bcommunitychurch.com. You can give via PayPal. That's just our email address, b2bchurch at aol.co.uk. Um, you can um, also um, phone, uh, uh, email the office and let us know. Um, we have card payments and machines at church as well if you want to give on a Sunday. Um, whichever way you want to give, I just want to pray with you. I want to release God's blessing over you in the name of Jesus. Father God, I just pray over every individual right now. And as they give tonight, Father God, I thank you, Lord God, they give in faith and they give in obedience. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that every need shall be met supernaturally. I thank you, Lord God, for your presence to fill their room right now. Father God, every worry and every anxiety, we uproot that right now in the name of Jesus and we replace it with your peace and with your love. I thank you, Lord God, that every need shall be met in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Please don't forget, come on time. We've got our 9 o'clock and 11.30. Remember, let's unite as a church. We're going to be um, taking up an offering for Uganda. Let's be in unity. Let's, let's unite. Everyone give their best. Give your best like it was your child out there or your auntie or your wife or your father that was in need. Let's give our best on Sunday. Um, remember, 9 o'clock and 11.30. We'll see you online on Friday on Instagram at midnight. God bless you and have a great week.